Wheel of Time Season 2 ended a few months ago, and it's time to start turning our attention towards Season 3. Today, we're going to break down all of the news that we know about Season 3, including castings, audition tapes that give us clues towards the plot. Join me today as I get you caught up on all of the Wheel of Time news, and we start to look forward to some big news in 2024. We'll just jump right into the news, but only after you take a quick second and smash the like button. That's how YouTube decides to share this stuff or not, and I would appreciate it. While you're there, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy Wheel of Time-related content, both about the show and the book series. But let's kick things off with some casting, and there are quite a few things to discuss. We'll cover some new additions that we know about for Season 3, but first, let's hit some characters who will be returning in Season 3 that were absent in Season 2. We'll start with everyone's favorite, Gleeman, that was upsettingly absent in season two, Tom Marilyn. Alexander Willem will return as Tom in season three of The Wheel of Time, reprising his take on the character. He was definitely a bit different in tone than in the books, but certainly a lot more gritty. I, for one, actually enjoyed this version of Tom that we got in season one. I'm excited to see more of what they're going to do with him. Willem is such a great actor, and it was such a, a, a much younger feeling Tom with a lot more edge to him. Also returning in season three are the Tinkers. Maria Doyle Kennedy as Isla, Daryl McCormick as Aram, and Narinder Samra as Rain will all return. Now, we all know that season three will be largely focused on the Shadow Rising, and the return of the Tinkers makes sense as they play a part in the book, especially with Perrin's storyline. Maria Doyle Kennedy was fantastic in season one in her limited appearances. She gave a lot of nuance to the Tuatha on. I also loved Derek McCormick as Aram. It, it'll be interesting to see how his character changes over the course of season two. I expect him to have quite an arc over the course of the season my guess. Juliet Howland will also be returning as Natty Cawthon, and while we don't have many other confirmed returning cast from the Two Rivers from season one, I'd expect to see some of the familiar faces like Daze Conger, Bran Alvere, and potentially some new named characters. But let's also not forget that Leia Costa is back as Mo Gideon in season three. And this is really almost like a new casting for season three because there was so little of her in season two, but I can say that I am extremely excited for some more Mo Gideon. She's a compelling character anyway, and Leia Costa's version uh, was very interesting, somewhat crazy. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about it yet, but I am excited to see more of it. So those are some of the people from season one and some parts of season two coming back for season three. But who is new for season three? Well, that is a long list as well. The cast of the show is greatly expanding with season three. Let's hit a few of the major castings. First, we'll start with Shore Agadashlu making her first appearance as Elida in season three. With a cast of characters that is already an embarrassment of riches when it comes to award-winning actors, Actresses. Adding someone the caliber of Shore is into the mix is just nuts. I'm beyond excited to see her on screen. I'm also pumped to see the introduction of Elida in the show. Next up, we'll stick with the cast of characters from Camelin. Actress Olivia Williams has been cast as the Queen, but that's likely to be more gays for camp. Olivia Williams is an award-winning actress from the United Kingdom with a career that has spanned more than 30 years. She's most known for her recent portrayal of Camilla Parker Bowles on The Crown. From what I have seen of her in The Crown, she's going to be an amazing Morgase. We also have Callum Kerr cast as Galad. Callum Kerr is a Scottish model and actor, and I can certainly see why he was chosen. Now, we don't have a confirmed Gawain, though, but my friends over at WattSeries.com believe that the actor Luke Featherston will be playing Gawain in season three. That's not confirmed, but they're usually right. If what they have done to Leandrin and Alana continues, though, I think we may end up liking Gawain more than we should. Also new for season three is Isabella Bucchieri as Fail. Isabella is known for her roles in everything in between, Threshold, and finally me. I haven't seen much of her, but I have rarely been disappointed with any of the casting choices to this point. I certainly think that she looks like Fael. We know that she is likely to have a fairly large role in season three, as they are adapting The Shadow Rising, and Fael has a large role in that book. This next casting is not necessarily a new role, but an older role recast. Rena Mahoney has been cast as Marin Alvere after a scheduling issue with Lolita Chaklobardi that forced the role to need to be recast. We know from a past interview in 2021 that the role of Marin Alvere is set to be a larger one than it was in season one which obviously makes sense given the material of The Shadow Rising. Also new for season three, we have Jared Dorak as J. Kim Carradine. Dorak has had roles in Underworld Blood Wars and Carnival Row. Lastly, we have Rebecca Root, who will be playing Lelaine Akashi. Now, this is an interesting one, as she's not just listed as playing Lelaine, but Lelaine Akashi 
Keeper of Chronicles. This is not a role that Lelaine had in the books, and it's a role that's currently filled by Leanne Sharif, and she's back for season three. So it's going to be interesting if that's just an error in how it was reported, or if it's a change from the book to the screen. And if it is a change, I'm struggling to figure out how we're going to get there. So we'll see. Rebecca Root is known for her role in Boy Meets Girl and The Danish Girl. She is also a comedian and a voice coach. I don't know much about her, but so I can't comment much about her acting ability. But again, they haven't gotten many castings wrong in the past, at least in my opinion. One other thing before we continue with the news, and that is to mention that there is a great opportunity that you have right now between seasons two and season three. And let's be honest, it's going to be a long wait. That opportunity, of course, is the chance to reread the books and get caught up to where we are in the story. Or you could pick up the Wheel of Time books for the very first time now that you've seen the show. I'm a busy person, and I know sometimes it's hard to just sit and read a book. And that's why I love audible.com. Audiobooks in general give an opportunity to experience a story in a very different way and you don't have to be sedentary to do it. I listen to books while I cook, while I travel, when I'm showering. Audible has been a longtime sponsor of the channel and they are giving all of my viewers a free audiobook, which means it's a great opportunity to check out audiobooks and see if you enjoy them. All you have to do is head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and sign up for the free trial. You'll get a free audiobook of your choice and you'll support the channel in the process. And you don't even need to keep the service and you can still keep your book. So again, Head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus, or just check the link in the description of the video. But let's get back to the news. So one of the things that we know is coming for season three of The Wheel of Time is covering the material of The Shadow Rising. But just as with seasons one and seasons two of the show, remember, this is an adaptation. So while they may be covering that material, that does not mean that we know exactly what we're going to see on screen. To that end, a lot of the speculation is how things are going to be adapted. Whatseries.com has helped us significantly by uncovering some audition scripts that were used for the show. Now, typically, I would tell you that these audition scripts are rarely like the show that they're used for. But in the past with The Wheel of Time, these have been remarkably accurate, if out of context, at least. So keep that in mind. What I'm about to share may not be accurate to what we'll see on the screen, but it has been in the past. So there are two audition scripts that Wattseries.com was able to uncover. Let's take a look at the first one here. The first one covers a conversation between Perrin Ebarra and Will Alcine. Will is seen by Perrin sharpening a sword, and Perrin asks him if he knows how to use it, and Will says it can't be much different than that axe, and they discuss Perrin killing White Cloaks at the Battle of the Foam. Lastly, they discuss the fact that the White Cloaks have the girls, and Perrin tells Will to come with him, implying he is going to go get them. Now, while this isn't straight out of the books, it does follow one of the main plot points from the books. The second of the auditions was for someone who is likely Senbui. In season one, there was an older man who was originally thought or actually cast as Senbui, but then they changed it or retconned it into annoying old man in the final version of the release show. So in this clip, potentially Senbui has a run-in with Perrin, where Perrin tries to convince him to not go back to his farm. But Sen tells Perrin that the White Cloaks will protect them and that they have done more than Perrin has. This is again, not from the book, but it appears to be a scene that is in line with Perrin convincing the citizens of the two rivers to defend themselves and stop relying on the White Cloaks, which is in the books. Whether or not they pull it off or not, I am probably the most excited to watch that plot line, the Perrin and the Two Rivers plot line, because Perrin's trip back to the Two Rivers and the Shadow Rising is peak Perrin to me. It's one of my favorite plot lines in the entire book series, so I am very, very excited for this coming season. All right, let's hit some other general season three news as it pertains to filming. Back in October, season three officially wrapped filming, in Prague at least. Keep in mind they shoot the show in multiple locations but it appears that the filming began all the way back in april of 2023 and wrapped last october but the filming still continues so they have been currently filming in cape town south africa it's assumed that they're going to be filming the scenes for tanchico and the io waste plot lines that we know will likely show up in this coming season if i had my guess just basing this off the way season two filming went i'd say they're probably a little bit further than halfway done filming the season with scenes towards the latter half of the season taking place in the waste in Tanchico, but that's truly just a guess. Another interesting tidbit here is that we know episode one of season three will be called To Race the Shadow, which has an interesting tilt to it. This is the title to a chapter in The Dragon Reborn, where Matt is in Camelin and he overhears Ravine speaking to a dark friend about offing Elaine. I don't think that that scene has anything to do with this episode. The show has done this a couple times now, pulling an episode title from the story and then repurposing the name, but given that title, it does make me wonder what the episode will be 
about? And will there be a time jump between the end of season two and the beginning of season three, like there was between season one and two? We will have to wait and find out. So one last thing before we finish up here today, and that is WatCon. If you are not aware, WatCon is one of the largest Wheel of Time focused conventions out there. And recently we just announced our guest lineup for 2024. And it's going to be awesome. Attending in person this year are some of our mainstays, Maria Simmons, who is Robert Jordan's assistant and keeper of the notes, part of Team Jordan, Michael Kramer and Kate Redding, the famous audiobook readers for the Wheel of Time audiobooks. They are loved so much by this fandom and have been a hit at the last two WatCons. Michael Livingston, the author of Origins of the Wheel of Time. And then finally, our guest of honor for 2024, Uno himself. Guy Roberts will be there in the flesh, hanging out with us Wheel of Time fans. For those that do not know, Guy Roberts, who plays Uno in the TV show, Long before he was cast in the role, he was a major fan of the Wheel of Time. And the great thing about WatCon is it's very welcoming. It's a very intimate environment. You're going to get to hang out and have a drink with Guy as well as the rest of our guests. Good luck keeping up with Kate. We believe that we may sell out this year, so get your ticket as soon as you possibly can. Head to WatCon.com and pick your ticket tier. I can't wait to see all of you again or for the very first time at WatCon in 2024. All right, so that is the Wheel of Time news so far. I'm back from a bunch of travel through December, about with walking pneumonia. I'm still breathing a little tough, but I will be back with Wheel of Time content all the way through 2024 both book and TV show content. Let me know in the comments of the video if there are any topics that you want me to cover. Make sure to smash the like button on the video and consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy Wheel of Time content. Huge thank you to my patrons. Your support is appreciated. If you wanna become a patron of the channel, check out the link in the description of the video. And if you like this video, consider checking out one of these videos here that you also might like. Thanks for watching and until next time, peace out.